Across the millions of worlds that constitute the Imperium of Man, the primary defense against any alien or heretical threat is the Imperial Guard. There are more specialized organizations, such as the Inquisitorial Ordos, which stand ready to oppose the most direst of threats. There are those organizations with more firepower, like the Titan Legions of the Adeptus Mechanicus and the war fleets of the Imperial Navy that can lay waste to entire cities in a matter of hours. There are more elite troops, like the genetically engineered warriors of the Adeptus Astarte, which stand at the pinnacle of human capabilities. Some would even say they transcend humanity. But despite this, none can doubt that the Imperial Guard is the most vital element of humanity's defense. From the ice halls of Valhalla, to the steaming jungles of Katachan, from the perpetual night of Mordia, to the blistering deserts of Talaran, uncounted millions of soldiers stand ready to crush the Emperor's enemies. They are normal men, but are often the byproduct of warrior cultures that reach back over the millennia, all firmly rooted in the martial pride of Terra. Within the Imperium, the sheer diversity of ancient cultures breeds countless types of soldiers, but within the Imperial Guard, this diversity is controlled and shaped to fashion an almost unstoppable weapon of war. Given the sheer size of humanity, this is a remarkable testament to the organization of the Imperial War Machine. The Imperium is so vast that central control of its widespread domains is particularly impossible. Often, it is difficult enough to ensure that the far-flung worlds remain loyal to the Emperor's cause, so controlling the day-to-day -day activities of these planets is a hopeless task. Because of this, the building blocks of the Imperial Guard are firmly based on military forces of individual worlds. Some Imperial worlds are governed by the Ministorum, the Church of the Divine Emperor, while others are controlled by the Adeptus Mechanicus. There are even some garrison worlds administered as a military society by the Imperial Guard itself. These are in the minority, however. The majority of worlds are independently governed by Imperial commanders, normally with the approval and support of the Adeptus Terra, although events sometimes go faster than the distant bureaucracy can keep up with. Imperial commanders, also known as planetary governors, are the scions of powerful noble families, each with their own power base and a means to maintain control without any routine support from the Imperium. Each Imperial commander is responsible for defending his own world. This independence is essential. Warp communication is as unreliable as warp travel. Without local defenses, an enemy could overwhelm a world before any force could be dispatched to aid it, even if such aid even existed. Local forces are generally categorized as planetary defense forces. They are intended to be fully capable of defending their worlds against most attacks, and to be able to keep even a powerful enemy at bay long enough for the Imperial support to be dispatched. The promise of Imperial support and the right to rule a world in the name of the Emperor comes at a price, however. Each commander is a sworn vassal of the Emperor and is responsible for providing military service in return. In the early days of the Imperium, this military service was a straightforward pledge to bring a set number of followers and fight in person. This approach was shown to be too inflexible as the Imperium grew and was replaced with a tithe. A tithe is assessed according to the wealth and resources of the world and can be taken in the form of men or materials. The method of assessment is arcane to say the least and taxes the abilities of countless adepts and scribes. When a tithe is taken as troops, soldiers will be recruited in much the same way as the planetary defense forces. Sometimes the regiments raised are identical, the tithes being drawn directly from the planetary defense force. On other occasions, the regiments needed are raised specifically for service in the Imperial Guard. Normally, a tithe will be in two parts, the first being a regular obligation that is supplied regardless of circumstance, and then the second being an obligation that can be demanded in response to an unusual circumstance. The organization that monitors the tithes is the Departamento Munitorum. This is a colossal organization with representatives amongst the High Lords of Terra, like the Lord Commander Militant of the Imperial Guard, the Chancellor of the Estate Imperium, and the Master of the Administratum. The Departamental Munitorum is responsible for all aspects of the Imperial Guard. It deals with providing training, equipment, and supplies to the diverse arms of the Guard. It controls their mustering, transportation to and across war zones, medical and technical support, planning, and discipline. Its most impressive facilities are in the garrison worlds established throughout the Imperium, but any world with a substantial tithe obligation will have a Departal Munitorum presence. The Departamental Munitorum is organized at a sector and subsector level, and each level has enough autonomy to respond to a local problem, normally acting to support Imperial commanders who need aid. They are empowered to raise regiments from worlds close to the crisis point in an increasing radius as required by the crisis. The degree of the response will escalate to the level of the threat 
If an Imperial world is invaded, the immediate defense will be provided by the Imperial commander and his planetary defense force. If these are inadequate, then the subsector command of the Departamento Munitorum will deploy its standing Imperial Guard regiments to augment the local forces. If more forces are needed, then the subsector command will raise additional troops, initially from nearby worlds and then from any world in the subsector. As the commitment of troops grows, sector command of the Departamento Munitorum will become involved and reinforcements will be drawn from more and more worlds. The outcome becomes that the harder an enemy strikes the Imperium, the greater the response will be. While individual regiments will be commanded by their own officers, normally drawn from the nobility of their homeworlds, when dozens of regiments are mustered, then a higher level of command is required. This staff is formed from the best of the officers in the Tithe regiments, recommended by their previous service or their family connections, and they receive additional trainings to prepare themselves for the great role in commanding an army. At the highest levels, these men will be known as Lord General Militants or Lord Commander Militants. However, there are many other titles in regular use. This is rarely a problem, as such high appointments are singular in nature and with only one Lord General active in a sector at one time. There are very rare circumstances in which a higher level of command is necessary. This may be the case when a major crusade is being organized and resources for multiple sectors are needed. This rank is the War Master. It is not available to the Departamento Munitorum without the express consent of the High Lords of Terra. As such, this individual is said to wield authority bestowed onto him by the Emperor of Mankind himself. A War Master has the authority to do what must be done. Because of this unrivaled power of the office, there is rarely more than one active War Master in the Imperium, and sentries can pass by without one being appointed. The fact that the Arc Trader Horus held this title of War Master, it has stigmatized the bearers of the rank. Other titles have therefore been used, the most famous of these being the rank of Lord Solar, most gloriously held by Saint Macarius in the early years of the 41st millennium. Now the Imperial Guard is far more complex than this, we're going to get into more details in the future about the structure of the Imperial Guard, subscribe to the channel if you want to get that, so if you're interested in knowing what unit belongs in what regiment and how big are the regiments, all that kind of stuff, subscribe to the channel because we will create a video in the near future for that. The reason I wanted to create this video is because I wanted to give you a broader sense of how the Imperial Guard is structured. This is actually coming from an old school code an Imperial Guard Codex and I want to show you something really badass from that Codex and something that kind of just reminded me of why I even started playing. So this is the Codex that I'm talking about. This is the 5th edition Imperial Guard Codex. Uh, me and my friends started playing the tabletop around 5th edition. We were collecting beforehand but we actually didn't start playing by the rules until 5th edition. And I remember him carrying this uh, book for a while. Well, I wouldn't say a while. He only played Imperial Guard for, for a little bit. Um, but what's cool about this is that if you ever come across a codex from an older edition, pick it up. Because it's full of really great lore that doesn't really exist in the most recent codex or even in like the rule book. Um, it has details um, like maps and like short stories from big campaigns or big battles, you just get like a glimpse um, from different um, viewpoints. So like if it's Armageddon, sometimes you'll get view view viewpoints from like the Orcs, the Steel Legion, uh, what have you. But what makes this uh, really badass is in the old Codex, well you kind of see it in the new Codex too, but in the old Codex, they used to have sections where they would show you each individual unit fully painted and what they look like. And this is it. And what's badass is that the old school terrain had a very unique look. Look how badass this little stand is. Uh, I am definitely going to take this and I am going to build my own like bunker style stand. You'll see it later. Uh, but getting ideas from these old codexes uh, is really beneficial. Look at how badass that looks right there. It looks like a sniper about to destroy a, a Tau on his little hammerhead. Um, and then you also get to see the old school minis. So back in the day, before we had Tempestus Scions, we had Kazarkins. These are the Kazarkins. These were metal uh, models. Um, they're, I don't even think they make them anymore, unless you special order them off of the GW website. Uh, also, the old school Adeptus Mechanicus figures. 
um, these guys, before the Adeptus Mechanicus was, this, was its own faction and had, like, you know, the Scutari Legion, uh, these guys were kind of all over the place in the Imperial Guard, the Inquisition, and in the um, Space Marines. So that's kind of cool to see. Um, but the one thing, oh, and then the, all the different regiments that you used to be able to collect, I still think you can buy these. It's just, like, you have to special order them off of the website. You can't just buy them at the store. Um, and then this... Oh, well, this is a cool blown out piece. This is what I'm talking about. This bunker is so inspirational. Like, I want to build something like this uh, during this quarantine. Uh, we still got like a couple months here in Illinois. So if I can build this, um, I'll probably make a video for you guys uh, and give you guys the step by step. But this is the page that I wanted to show you guys. This is the reason I started 40K. This inspires me to go out and start painting and modeling again. Um, and it is just because you have like... It's a, it's a pretty basic Cadian model, but all the different color schemes are just so badass. And it kind of like plants a seed in your mind, and then you just think about this all day. All you can think about is like, how would I paint my um, Imperial Guard army? And that's, I think, half the time, the planning and the uh, speculation of what your army would look like, uh, that for me is what drives the, the hobby. That's really why I keep playing. Um, and I just wanted to share that with you guys. It's pretty badass. Uh, and then you have the old school models, two of the old school commanders. But I hope you guys enjoyed. Like I said, if you guys ever come across any old codex, pick it up. It's worth it. Um, thanks for listening. And uh, if you guys have any suggestions for any other topics, comment down in the comment section below. Thank our patrons on Patreon. It is because of them that we can do this. Link in the description if you guys want to support us. And uh, yeah, thanks for listening, guys. This was Gershwan with One Mind Syndicate signing out.